Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing is a personal favorite hymn. It's right up there with Amazing Grace. Um, in our hymnal, it is nestled in the baptism section, which I think is appropriate. But I also could sing it every single day, baptism or not. Um, so let us walk through the three verses of this hymn together. The first and opening verse goes like this. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. This opening verse of the hymn is a a call um, out to God, right? Come, thou fount of every blessing, which is God. Tune my heart to sing your grace, God's goodness. God's streams of mercy are never ceasing, exactly as the hymn says. And that unending, always flowing goodness of God's mercy calls for us to offer our loudest praise. Um, and then it goes on to say, teach me some melodious sonnet, some beautiful songs, some of that loudest praise, um, sung by flaming tongues above. When I get to that part, I always think of the prophets who, when they have visions of entering God's court, they are met by seraphims and cherubs and there's coal to cleanse their tongue. Um, I think of Pentecost, where the people are anointed and have flames as they speak in the different languages. So that line for me, while not necessarily pointing to one thing, points to a lot of biblical illustrations and imageries, imagery excuse me, that we have um, that just makes me think of God's holiness, God's sanctification, and us being sanctified through God's mercy and God's love. The last part of this line says, Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Praise the mount, right? If it is truly a fountain of God's goodness, which is what this song is calling for, let us be mounted. Let us be fixed upon God's goodness, God's fount, that stream of unending mercy. Let us be so connected to it that we are fixated on it. The second stanza go, or verse goes like this. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He, to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Whenever I heard this song as a kid, I immediately thought of Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. Um, because here I raise my Ebenezer. That was the only connection I had. As I got older, I realized and learned that Ebenezer is a stone for help. And I don't know about you, but there have been times where I am hiking where you will see like a little mount, a little place of rocks piled up. And ever since then, that has been my image, that we in the maps and journeys of our lives leave these stones or God leaves stones that helps for us and they become reference points, guides along the path. And so that's what I think of when I say, when I sing, here I raise my Ebenezer, my stone of help. Hither is an ancient old English word that means towards a place. So towards your help, God, I'm coming. And I hope by your good pleasure, God, that I'll, safe, that I'll safely arrive at home in Full communion with God is how I interpret home there. Jesus sought after me when I was a stranger, when I wandered from the love, the fold of God, and he rescues me from danger. He interposed his precious blood. Interposed is a word that means to insert between two things. So as I'm wandering away, God, Jesus inserts his precious blood to pull me back to make me a part of the family, to fix me again on that mount that is God's goodness and love. The third verse. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, 
Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. I am indeed constrained to be a debtor, a sinner. Even on my very best days, I am only stumbling towards the light, as my friend and songwriter David Lamont says. I'm constrained by my sinful nature, our sinful nature, collectively and individually. So God, this stanza is saying, let your grace, like a fetter, which is uh, defined as a chain that restrains a prisoner that is usually found around the prisoner's ankles. So God, chain me, restrain me, bind my wandering heart to you. Uh, not so much that we are a prisoner, don't take it that way, I don't think, um, but that we, God's goodness and love holds us back, right? Keeps us in the right way, despite all of our best efforts to go away from God. This is the part that really gets me every time. Prone to wander from your path, God, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love because of that sinfulness that I'm constrained to. Here's my heart. That's the best offering, the best gift we have to offer to God. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Seal it in its goodness. Seal my heart, my offering, my gift to you, God, in such a way that it stays good, that it stays holy, that it stays solely seeking after your will. Seal it, God, for your courts, your realm, that I will, as another verse has said, safely arrive at home.